Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today, I am going to walk you through a tool that I think any woodworker will eventually need as you grow your skills and as you start building larger and larger projects. Now, this one specifically is a router sled that I built for flattening slabs and tables and other sorts of things that you might build that require a lot of surface area, but you can flatten with a jointer or through some of the other traditional means. Now this one is made out of wood with ball bearings. It moves very nice, it is very smooth, and it is easy to use. I have also created one out of wood before that wasn't quite as easy to use, but it is very low in cost and a very low barrier to entry if you wanna make one yourself. So let me go ahead and show you the features of this router sled. Some of the things I like about it and some of the things I think I need to change. So let's go ahead, rearrange the camera, and I'll show you some of the features. So this router sled is similar to most that you will see out there. It has a typical linear motion where you can slide back and forth like this, as well as slide left and right like this. Now I am using these ball bearing driven uh, sort of connectors here that make the action on the router sled very simple and very easy to move. So you can see how easy it is to move back and forth and left and right. And so what's important about this is you don't have to put a lot of stress on the router when you're pushing it. Uh, and more importantly though, it, it has a great deal of of stability vertically like this, as well as left and right, it doesn't really rack too much. Now I will say that it does rack a little bit, but that's not really too important when you're flattening a slab like this. Uh, but nevertheless, if you were using something like a wooden router sled, the chances of it moving very easily is fairly low unless you do a really good job waxing it or you use some sort of Teflon or something to get some good action on your wood one. Now I will tell you the other one that I made, which was made out of wood, it worked perfectly well, however, wasn't nearly as adjustable as this one. And so in this case, you can use the router, move it up and down to create your height. I have this slab here up on some blocks that raises it up a little bit. So if I were to not raise this up, I would have to lower the router here. One advantage of this specific design is you can take this router plate and you can turn it around the other way so the router sits higher. And so what that'll allow you to do is you can flatten things that are much, much taller than you would normally. And so the other thing you can do with this is you can also put some blocks in here to lower it even further. So you wouldn't need these blocks in here necessarily to hold your wood up. I actually kind of like having the blocks in here. It allows me to level this a little bit better. It gives me some good stability here. So I have just used some hot glue to hold it into place here. So let's go ahead and talk very briefly about the specific components of this design and kind of the costs of some of the things that you're looking at if you want to build something like this on your own. The core components of this system is based on these linear rails using these SBR20 bearings. Now what that means is 20 is the diameter of these rails. So I have 20 millimeter rails here across the top and then 20 millimeter rails here across the bottom as well. Now I will say you probably don't need 20 millimeter rails on the bottom. You could easily get away with 16. And if you did have 16, it would save you a little bit of height so you wouldn't necessarily need to block up your slab like I have done here. Now I will say that 20 millimeter rails here for the crossbar here for what is essentially the Y axis is pretty much required. It does reduce the flex by having these 20 millimeter rails. And you can see here when I push down on it, you don't get a lot of flex here. So what that means is when you're doing your routing here, that you're not gonna get a lot of flex on the router, which means you're gonna get a more flat surface at the end. So I think it's really important to have 20 here, but like I said, 16 here would probably work just as fine. I have seen designs with both. Now, the another advantage of this specific type of rail here is it does have this flat surface here that you can screw onto a board like I've done here, and then these rails just ride along it. A nice feature of this specific design here are these rails. You can see how they extend beyond the sides here. And so what I did is I got the longest rails that I could possibly find. And what that allows me to do is I can actually expand this out and get even more width when I'm routing. I have found that the width here and the length are really important. You got a lot of extra room here on the sides that you won't be able to reach with the center of your router bit. So having a much wider berth here for you 
your slab is really important if you want to get something that is much, much wider than this. Now, this specific design, I think, can go up to about 50 inches wide in terms of its routing capacity. This slab here is about 30 inches, and it routes all the way to the side and all the way to this side with a little bit of room to spare. And obviously I have a lot of length here as well. But if you had a slab that's just slightly larger, you might actually run out of real estate even though these rails are fairly large. So I do think that uh, having that little extra movement there by having these longer rails is important. Now in terms of length, these rails only come in a maximum of about six feet. At least that's what I was able to find online. Uh, so if you did need something that was longer, uh, what I would recommend then in that case is you probably want to just reposition the router sled on the slab itself rather than trying to look for something longer. Uh, in the future, I might actually buy rails of different sizes as well. Because you can see here, this is kind of big and bulky. There's a lot of extra of a rail uh, distance here that I don't need for this specific slab. Now I, am, I have a future project that is coming up that is slightly larger than this. It's a little bit wider and a little bit longer. So I'll probably max this guy out uh, in terms of capacity for that next one. Uh, but most of the things that I do are around this size, this 30 inches by, by 48 or so inches. So um, this size, uh, you know, it works pretty well, but it's a little big, like I said. So it's really up to you on the configuration you want to get. Uh, and certainly uh, price is an option as well. So the longer these are, the more expensive if they are and the more it costs to ship them. So just keep that in mind if you choose to build your own. In this specific configuration, I have mounted the router so that these plate here is down, which gives it its lowest setting. One thing I will say about this design that I would like to change in the future is these bolts right here do protrude below the base of the router, which means you lose a little bit of routing space here. Now that might not seem like a big deal, but when you have a plunge router, it only has so much travel. Uh, this uh, little quarter of an inch or so could be a big deal whenever you're flattening something like this. You might have to block it up again if you reach your maximum depth of your router. So again, I think I'm going to try to work on a design that makes these flush and use a slightly thicker acrylic piece here on the router plate. So another design choice that I made in this specific configuration that I would like to change in the future is how these brackets attach to this rail system here. Now I do have this piece of acrylic here that spans this entire width that keeps the proper distance of these rails. You do not necessarily need to have a piece of acrylic that goes across all the way. Uh, the, the router plate here itself will keep these rails at the proper distance, so that's not a big deal. But what I did here is I actually reset these bolts, or there's some nuts in here for these bolts that hold this rail on. Now with this quarter inch piece of acrylic, there just isn't enough material to keep these bolts in there securely. I actually have cracked this one completely, um, so you can see here that it kind of rocks back and forth. So if I were to do this again, I would probably use maybe maybe half inch acrylic here or some half inch uh, uh, HDPE or something like that. That would be a better piece of material here. And then again, I might not go all the way across. It might be a little bit easier to configure by not having it all the way across here like it is right now. Uh, but it's not a big deal having this big long piece here. I just think having more surface area would be better for this bolt configuration here. Now, the downside of having a thicker piece here is it's gonna further raise up this uh, router sled from the base, you might need more blocking as well. So uh, I'm still looking at options here, but if you have any suggestions or any comments on maybe a different way to look at this, you know, drop them down in the comments of the video here. Uh, I'd be very much interested in that to see if we can optimize this design. The final feature of this router sled that I want to upgrade is to have the ability to raise and lower the sled itself without touching the slab that you are routing. It would be really desirable that once you've reached your maximum depth of your bit here, of your plunge router, that you could lower the sled without really uh, moving any of the pieces that you're flattening, because you don't want to introduce any variability uh, in the flattening process by maybe getting something a little bit not as straight as it was the first time you did it. Uh, alternatively, rather than blocking it up like I've done here, it would be nice to be able to raise this um, uh, up 
on some sort of stand or something, I haven't quite figured out the design, uh, so that you could have that additional distance and then you can lower it whenever you get it flattened to a, a lower level. So uh, that's one design feature that I certainly am looking into. I've been pondering it for quite some time. I've actually been working on this design for the better part of two years. I got all the parts way back in the kind of the height of COVID and I didn't get a chance to really use it until recently. So if anyone has any comments or suggestions on how to uh, reconfigure this router so to make it a little bit more adjustable, uh, you know, I'm completely open to that. Please leave your comments down below. If there's any makers out there on the YouTubes maybe that want to do a collaboration to level up this router sled, I'd be completely into that. So feel free to reach out through the comments or uh, shoot me an email or something like that. Well, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to make. I have been working on this design for quite a long time. I can't quite say that I have it perfected, but I really do like it. It is very flexible and it certainly meets my needs. If you're interested in the plans for this, I will be posting them online. Also leave your comments and your questions down below if you have any questions about this specific design. All right, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far in the video. And don't forget, to be inspired. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Eve Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today, I am going to walk you through a tool that I think any wood waker, wood waker, no. Just use some, what's it called? Hot glue. <laughs>